Hello everyone, welcome to Shell Black Whiteboard. I'm your host, Shell Black, president of shellblack.com and Salesforce MVP. This episode is about orders, so let's jump into it. So orders is a standard object, just like accounts, contacts, and opportunities. And being a standard object, we can have custom fields, page layouts, record types, validation rules. So why, why even bother with orders? We've got opportunities, right? Opportunities and products. Well, you may not want to have a return um, hit or ding your salesperson. So if you had a return, you would have to reduce the quantities of your products against an opportunity. And what happens is you're not preserving what has been sold versus what has been shipped or returned. Orders are essentially another table in the Salesforce database that we can split what was sold in an opportunity and preserve that maybe for commissions and forecasting versus uh, what has actually been delivered or returned by the, the client in the orders table. So really we're preserving data in the database by using the orders table. Um, creating orders is manual. So just like you're creating quotes manually or adding products to an opportunity manually, creating an order and adding products uh, to an order is manual, unless you've got some custom code that maybe replicates the opportunity and products down to your order, or maybe you've got an integration. Maybe an integration is bringing in your orders from a, an e-commerce site. Opportunities, quotes, orders, reduction orders are all very similar. The concepts are very, very similar. So if you know how to add products to an opportunity, or if you know how to put quote line items against a quote, you already know how to add products to an opportunity and even create a reduction order, which is really a negative order, negative quantities or a return. You've already got those concepts down. It's essentially the same type of page layout, the same data structure. When you go to a order, for example, and you want to add a product, just like an opportunity or just like a quote, it's going to ask you to pick a price book and then you're going to search for a product just like you would in quotes in the quote module or the opportunity module. So the concepts, you have an, an, an opportunity kind of header and the, the product line items. Again, the quotes has a header and product line items. Order, same thing. When is it shipped? Uh, tracking numbers, whatever, product line items. And if you have a reduction order, you kind of have a header, which is the reduction order, order, and the order products. All very similar process-wise, which kind of gets into a couple things uh, that you need to know. So you may not see orders out of the box unless you've enabled it. Enabling it is simply a checkbox, and then you'll get two other checkboxes that's going to ask you, do you also want to have reduction orders, which is negative quantities, and another checkbox, do you want to have negative quantities on your products? Most people do. Um, since we've already discussed that if you've used opportunities and products and quotes and quote line items, a lot of the fields and concepts are very similar. There are over 40 standard fields. I didn't want to list them all and kind of bore you to death, but let me hit a couple things that are a little bit unique about orders. One is there's an order number. It auto numbers, just like when you have a quote, you create a quote record, it auto numbers um, in sequence. There's the same concept of that when you create an order record. Uh, next is activation. And this is really kind of up to you. It's kind of a business process feature, um, who activated it, those type of things. So you might not want to activate until it's shipped, or maybe you don't want to activate the order until accounting has invoiced it. Again, it's really kind of dependent on your, your business process. There's no hard and fast rule of when you use activation. And then status. Again, it's a pick list. We know from our other discussions that any time you see a status pick list, it's usually a life cycle field. So it could be um, in the warehouse, being pulled, ready to ship, shipped, invoiced, whatever that status, returned, um, those type of things. And there's also um, some security that's able, you can put in place, which is around who authorized that order. Um, and that kind of leads into the last topic is setting up security around orders. You may not want salespeople to process returns. Um, so again, kind of thinking about who in your organization is going to manage orders and manage reduction orders, which are returns, you may need to put some security around who can see it, who can activate it, who can delete an order record. So as a best practice, also think about setting up security uh, so who can see and do what with orders and reduction orders is, is a best practice. So that's it. The main takeaway is orders. Don't be scared of it. The, the data model and the structure of it is very, very similar to opportunities and quotes. It's just kind of another layer deep in the uh, business process of selling. Um, hope you enjoyed that little episode on orders. If you have any questions or comments, you can hit me on Twitter, shell underscore black, or you can email me at whiteboard at shellblack.com. Thanks so much for watching.